Welcome back here to another episode where, in this episode, we're going to cover the HTTP functionality provided by the plugin. This episode is going to be a little different compared to the other two which I have done up to this point. The reason it's going to be a little different is because I've set up some already existing functionality for this tutorial. All it is is creating widgets and some widget layout and design so I don't have to do that during the episode but I will go over everything what I've done and how I've done it so even though I'm not going to show step by step how I done it you will still be able to follow along as I'll show the blueprint and the whole layout of all my widgets but just be aware that some pre-existing functionality was made for this tutorial once again I just wanted to hop in here real quick and just let you guys know that this tutorial and any upcoming tutorials will be developed using this plugin right here, the JSON and HTTP utility plugin. Uh, this plugin has all of the functionality which I'm going to use in the tutorial. So if you'd like to find out more about this plugin or get it for yourself, a link will be in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Now back in the editor, we are back in the third person template project I have created uh, two episodes ago. In this tutorial, the only difference is instead of starting with a fresh project with no existing logic, I have gone ahead and created some widgets, as you can see right here, two widgets and some functionality to actually initialize the widget. So as you can see here, we have some functionality to spawn the widget, save a reference to it, add it to viewport, show our mouse cursor so we can actually see where we're moving the mouse and then change the input mode to UI only so we can actually interact with the widgets instead of actually interacting with the game's world. All of this was done for the reason that in this episode, I'm going to be using these two APIs right here, as you can see, the get request and the post request. I'll get to these, what these mean soon, but basically this API right here will return a long array of games with some specific data regarding each game, like who made the game, what type of game it is, a little description, a link, etc. And instead of me showing you all of this again in the JSON file, like I have been for the past two tutorials, I wanted to show another way you could use this plugin and create some visual widgets for you guys to see. So uh, before I get into any logic, let me showcase how the widget actually looks like. If I press play, as you can see, the game disappears. So the game is still there, but a widget gets created. And then it says the preview widget right here. And this actually here, it looks like blank space, but it's actually a scroll box. So when we create the, the correct functionality, this scroll box will get populated with sub widgets which have all of the information about every single game in the JSON file. And here is the actual widget which gets created when we populate that scroll box. We have a widget with two horizontal aligned boxes like right here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five text boxes. Each text box will define a different piece of data. As you can see here, the game name, the game description, the genre of the game, the platform the game is on and who developed the game. And this widget actually has some logic tied to it. So the logic tied to this widget is actually just this, populate data, which is a sim simple function, but when we go into it, it takes each text entry you saw in the pre previous window in the designer and populates it with some text, which is taken from these variables right here. And these variables are actually created within this widget right here and they're actually exposed on spawn, as you can see. And what this means is when we come to create this game entry widget, these variables will be exposed right away when we spawn this widget. So then we can directly feed each piece of JSON data into this entry widget, and it will take that data and right away set the text according to the passed in data. Now back in the actual character blueprint where we're going to do all of our main logic, we need to figure out what data we want to pull from the JSON file. And to do that, we actually need to send our first HTTP request to the given API. 
So we're going to use uh, this one right here, the get request for the free to gamecom API. So if I just copy it, control C, and it's going to be in my clipboard, I can now uh, pull off from set input mode UI only, and then do HTTP request. And you'll see that this is the custom HTTP request uh, function provided by the plugin. So if I just use that one right here, and then I can just simply provide it with a URL. And the URL is basically the API, the, the URL to the API you're sending your request to. So we will place that API right here. Like that. Then we're going to have to choose which request type we are sending. So in this case, I know that this is a get request type. And that's because when I checked the API documentation for this specific API, it said that this is a of type get. So I'm going to leave it as get. The timeout is basically a duration of how long your HTTP request will try to resend itself after initially failing. So, for example, if you have an API request here and you're trying to send a request, but for some reason it fails, it will retry to send itself again and again for this amount of time before it completely stops. So if I set 10 seconds here, this is in seconds, this will keep trying to send itself for 10 seconds. If this fails after 10 seconds, the whole request is dropped. And then finally, the request body. So the request body is basically only used when you want to send either post or patch request types, because if you see right here, the request body is actually a structure. So if I drag off of it, I type in make, I can create a structure, which then provides me with a string body, a JSON body and headers. So headers can be used in any request. A header is basically some extra information you can tie into your HTTP request. So for instance, if I make a new header map and I could create a new header called content type, which would be of application JSON, if I spell it correctly. And what now I have created is a new header of type content type, which has the value of application JSON. What this will mean is any data I send to the API or receive from the API has to be in a JSON format. So headers are universal and can be used in any type of request. But when it comes to JSON body and string, these are only used when you want to send specific data to the API. We'll get to sending data later down in the video. So for now, we're just going to use a request type and ig ignore these two. So I'm going to leave the header as content type application JSON because this will work with the type of request we're doing right now. So I'm just going to move it over like this. I'm going to leave it as a get time of 10 seconds. And the first thing you need to know when sending a request is what kind of data the API will return. So let's say I'm doing this for the first time and I don't know what kind of data it will return. So what I can simply do is drag out from out JSON and type in to string and on success, I can just print the whole content of that JSON to log and to the screen. And then simply I could just run the game like that. And then I have all of the content right here. So I can see title, short description, URL, genre, platform. So all of these data entries, which I'm able to use. So now if I go into the log, I can see them right here. So now I can just cross reference the data received from the API to the widget I created, which I showed you guys previously. So I need the game name, the game description, genre platform developer. So quickly off camera, I went through the output log and I cross referenced the data I need for my widgets with the returned data from the output log here. And I have found that each piece of data I need for my widget is correspondent to these field names returned from the JSON data. So now knowing the field names for the data I need to populate my widget, we can go back into the blueprint for our character, remove this logic right here because we don't need it anymore and we, let's actually create a new function called parse json data and then just quickly put it right here on success 
And then for when I press on the function, create a new input uh, variable of type JSON object. And then we can do out JSON like that. And then just connect the out JSON from the HTTP request to our new function like that. So now when the function call receives the data, it will pass it into this function. So opening up the function, we can now start manipulating the data. So I know that JSON request returns us an array. So we can pull out from out JSON and type in try get array field. The array field is called data. And then this will return us an array of JSON objects we can actually loop through. So then we can just for loop this like this. And now we can actually start accessing every single entry within that array and getting individual data out of it. So I know already the names of the fields, what holds the data I need, so I can start getting it. So first field is going to be the game name, which is a string. So I can do get string field. And then the name of that field is title. And then we can just promote that to a local variable, title. And then we can just do that again. Actually, before we do that, let's just, let me disconnect these two and just promote this one to a local variable too. Local JSON object, like that. And then reconnect these two. And then I just connect the local here. So now it will save me from having to drag out hundreds of lines from here. I can just use this local, um, local variable. So now I have my title. Now let's get the game description, which is also a string. Get string field, short descri description, like that. Connect it together, then promote that to a local variable. And then just put it there. And then let's repeat that process for every single piece of data I need. Okay, so now as you guys can see, I've went through every single piece of data I need from the JSON file, returned it from the actual JSON object and stored it as local variables. So now I have all the data I need stored right here, the description, the genre, platform and developer. Now using this data, I can actually create my widget. So in this case, I can now pull off from the end right here after I got all the data I need, I can then do create widget. And then I can create my entry widget, which is MMO game entry right there. And now you can see because those variables I showed you guys before was exposed on spawn, we can actually just populate them right here. So now all I have to do is just match the local variable to the exposed variable from the widget. And that's everything. So the name will be the name description genre platform developer all right and just like that we've populated our widget with the correct data and then all we have to do is get the current display widget widget reference so this references the actual preview widget we're gonna get the scroll box which i've mentioned also before and we're gonna add a child to that scroll box and the child will be of this newly created entry widget. So now what this will do is place an entry widget into that scroll box. And that's actually everything. If you look over the logic right here, this is the final logic. If you would like to copy it, just like that. If I compile it, save it and go back into the game, and as you guys now can see, the preview widget has been populated with every single game what returned from that API request and could be found in that JSON file. As you can see, there is quite a few games here. If I really wanted to, you could use this plugin to create a program which finds all of the most up-to-date games and gives you descriptions, the links to the games, 
and what not. So now, like I could now just scroll through here and find some games I've never heard of and maybe try them out if I really wanted to. But hopefully this is showing you the capabilities of the plugin and what you could do using the get request. We have now reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new, maybe found out more information about the plugin. If you're willing to give it a go and want to try all of this for yourself, a link to the plugin is down in the description. I'm going to split this tutorial into two episodes. This episode is all about the get request and in the next one we're going to cover the post and patch requests. But till then, see ya.